Hello everyone. So today I want to talk about commissions. I recently asked on Instagram and maybe somewhere else um, if anyone had any questions that I could answer in a Q&A video and I had quite a few questions about commissions so I thought I might as well just do a separate video about this because it's a pretty important topic <laughs> for artists and I don't want there to be any confusion. I just want you to be able to find this video quickly and get your answers. In this video, I will of course be sharing my own experience with commissions. There are a million different ways you can do commissions and make a living as an artist. So what I do might not work for everybody. The way I do things has worked really well for me for a few years, so I just want to throw it out there into the world and maybe someone else can benefit from it. While I talk about this, I will show you the process of painting an actual commission that I did last summer. And I have a whole separate video sharing the step-by-step -step process for this specific painting that is uploaded over on Patreon. So if you want to see more of the behind the scenes on how I actually made this painting, go check it out. Okay, let's just jump into this. To give you an idea of what you're watching while I talk, this is the subject that the client wanted me to paint. And this is my final painting. So first of all, what are commissions? A commission is a custom piece of art that a client personally requests. It means that they are paying you to bring their idea to life. It could be a portrait of their dog or a concept drawing of a product they're inventing. Who knows? And that's actually something exciting about commissions. I get requests for things I never would have painted on my own, and therefore I'm pushed outside the boundaries of my own imagination, and that often leads to growth but commissions can be very bittersweet. On one hand, you are being paid to create art, and who doesn't love that? On the other hand, you are no longer just striving to satisfy yourself. You have a paying customer who has their own ideas and vision and expectations. You have to perform. You have deadlines, responsibilities, and that can be kind of intimidating. But here's the thing. You don't have to accept every commission that comes your way. When someone contacts you, you have just as much right to learn about them as they do about you. Use those first few messages to get to know each other. If you feel that there's something off about the situation or notice any other red flags, just politely decline. <laughs> you really need to protect yourself from predators and bullies and all the other weirdness that is going to find its way to your inbox. I get quite a few scam messages every single month and the most popular one that has happened in like the last year or so is that it's someone looking to buy a piece of your art for anywhere from $500 to $5,000 and if you respond they start pulling you in. They either want to like send you cash or pay by check or something weird. Just mark it as spam so that Google knows it's spam and ignore it. Just, just completely move on. But you will get a ton of legitimate requests as well. I personally have really strong instincts and I'm always very protective of myself, of my time, of my business. But if you aren't sure, just use those initial messages to get to know each other. Don't ever click on links in someone's email. Go to Google or wherever and type their company in or their name or whatever the product is or, you know, like go do your own research don't use the links they send you or especially don't download any attachments. Just be smart on the internet. <laughs> and if you happen to miss a message and someone legitimately wants art from you, they will probably try again. But just know that you have the right to protect yourself and there will always be more commission requests. Even if you turn down 10 of them in a row, there will be one that comes to you that is just perfect. <laughs> Okay, so let's say someone contacts you and it's legit and they have a really cool idea and you want to work together. What's the next step? My process is as follows. Usually we're talking in email. And so in the email, I will list out the terms of the project in very clear writing. The size, the materials, subject, deadlines, payment policy, price, shipping, everything I can think of. This can also be done in the form of an official contract. And I always make sure I use a contract if I'm working with a bigger company or a really big project. Once they agree to those terms, I send an invoice for 50% of the total payment, usually through PayPal. 
Why 50%? Well, that's usually a big enough number to weed out anyone who isn't serious. It protects your time and materials in case they bail out, which it happens. This sort of payment system shows them that you're serious and that you're not going to bail out either. Take yourself seriously, take your client and the project seriously, and just don't apologize for getting paid to do what you are an expert in. After I receive the 50% deposit, I begin doing my research about the subject and I will work on concept sketches. I like to provide a couple concepts to let the client choose which direction they want me to go. And after they decide, the real work starts. I start a more intensive research stage, which sometimes involves doing a couple different versions of the painting in a small scale, value studies, lots of sketching, and this helps me feel more confident. And then eventually I jump into the final painting. Some people want to see progress photos throughout this process, and others don't. I usually find out at the beginning if they want to see the stages along the way, but this can be tricky if you find yourself with a very opinionated and picky client. They might start requesting changes or specific colors or whatever, and it's up to you to decide the amount of customization they are allowed to have. But again, this is why I do concept paintings at the beginning, because it makes sure that they know which direction I'm going and that we're both happy. After the painting is complete, I send a photo for final approval, and depending on which medium I'm using, I explain whether they can request any changes. Typically, I only allow a small change within reason because I'm using traditional, like, physical paint. <laughs> If they want a few more flowers or a bit more shimmer on the water, that's easy. The amount of customization is part of your agreement, just make sure you're very clear on those terms. And once everyone's happy with the final result, I will send a final invoice for the remaining payment, including shipping at this point. It's important to know how much it costs to ship things around the world, and that's why I have become very familiar with the shipping system here. I have a scale and I use the online system to figure out exactly how much things will cost, or you could even take a mock-up of your package to the post office and have them tell you exactly how much it will cost. Once they pay the final invoice, I will then package everything up and get ready to ship. I always ship with tracking numbers because honestly, nowadays you just never know. And it's such a huge peace of mind to see your package moving across the world. 99% of my shipments are international, so I need that peace of mind. One question I received is how do I deal with a client who wants me to paint something that's not in my style? Like they send me an example of a painting by another artist who does a very different style than I do, but they want me to paint it. Um, basically I just say F off. No, I'm kidding. I don't take those commissions. It's not worth it. It's just the worst. <laughs> this goes back to protecting yourself, protecting your time. And for me, it just comes down to why would you contact me to paint that when you want this in that specific artist style? Contact them. Sorry if that's harsh, but I've had plenty of those requests over the years and I'm just so over it. Another great question I got was, how do you know you're ready to start taking on commissions and you even sell your work in the first place? Of course, that is very personal. I never feel ready. Anytime I get a request, I'm nervous. I just want to do the best I possibly can. I don't wanna let anybody down, especially if they're paying me. So I do get nervous. So I basically have to just pluck up the courage if I really don't think I can do a commission, like if it's way outside of my skill level. For instance, I don't do portraits, so I just won't accept portraits. I'm not interested in painting them, not gonna take it. But if it is something within my wheelhouse, and especially if it's exciting, even if I think it's going to be difficult, I just figure out a way to make it work. A lot of times that means doing tons of extra research, tons of extra sketching, lots of practice painting until I get to the point where I'm like, okay, let's do this. Because here's the thing, this person contacted you because they saw something in your work that you share online. They saw something that interests them, that pulls them in. They want your style. They want you to represent their idea. And that in itself is a huge honor to me. So I want to find a way to do their idea justice. And it does take a lot of work to get there. I've also seen a few people asking about copyright and you own the copyright to your creations. 
Even if someone commissions you and you mail them the final canvas with the painting on it, hopefully you have taken photos of it because you still own the rights to that intellectual property. They are not allowed to reproduce your work for money. And again, this is where contracts come in handy <laughs> because all of that stuff would be in the contract. Um, but if you don't have a contract, if you're just doing through email or conversation, at least have some kind of paper trail. Make sure you say somewhere that you own the copyright. Some artists will include something that says um, they, the artist, are allowed to make prints of that work and sell the prints. Obviously the person who commissioned it is not allowed to do that. But again, all these things should be either written somewhere or um, you have a record of that. <laughs> if I happen to miss explaining anything or if anyone has any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. But I hope you enjoyed this. And don't forget there is a video over on Patreon showing the step-by-step -step process with explanation of how I painted this. But anyways, I hope you all are having a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. Take care. Thank you.